asking a lot when we sing that song and prayer to you with prayerful and hungry hearts for your righteousness, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love, for your holiness to heal every fiber of our sin sick being. Breathe on us today. Breathe on me today, Father, by the power of presence of your life-giving, life-changing, life-transforming spirit, that I may speak the words of eternal life that only you have, and that we all may be drawn ever closer to you. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to turn in the scripture today, if you have your Bibles with me, if you want to pick up your pew Bible. And turn to Ephesians chapter 5 on the heels of a passage that we've looked at a couple of times through our series on relationships. Incredibly important passage of Scripture in many ways that reiterates some of the wonderful truths that are found throughout the Word of God from beginning to end. But Ephesians is a small little letter that Paul wrote to a little church to encourage them to help build them up in love. Ephesians, be Galatians, Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Listen very closely to the message here. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place as obscene, silly, and vulgar talk. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be associated with them. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. And thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, in my past, and I oftentimes still hear Christians say at times today that the Bible doesn't say that we should be thankful for everything. It says that we should be thankful in everything. Well, that's true that the Bible does say in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 that we should be thankful in everything. But as we just read here, we hear that it also tells us to be thankful 
for everything. Now, as hard as that may be to imagine, it is possible, humanly impossible, but with God, all things are possible. With God and because of God, what God does in us, we can truly learn to be thankful for, for everything. The good and the bad. One of the main problems that we have as sinful human beings is unthankfulness. Some even attribute unthankfulness as being the root of all other sin. There's debate on those issues, but it certainly lies at the foundation of humanity's problem. In Romans chapter 1, one of those passages that most preachers today would like to avoid, in Romans 1, 21, it says, For though they knew God, they did not honor. Talking about humanity in general. Sinful humanity. But for they, though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give Him thanks. At the root of sin is a refusal to honor God. According to the Bible's judgment, the Bible judges humanity as being unwilling to honor God, the, to give God the honor that He is due. Some will say, well, I don't even believe in God. Well, the Bible's judgment of that is that very unbelief is a symptom of our sin-sick soul that refuses to honor the God that we really deep down inside know and know that He is. Because Paul goes on to say there in that passage that it is evident, just simply looking at creation itself, it is evident that God is. That there is a God and that He is powerful, that He is all-knowing, that He is everywhere present, that He is the source and the designer of all life, including the life that we possess. So unthankfulness is a symptom of a sin-sick soul that refuses to honor God. The attraction of the negative is so powerful that it can blind us to the blessings of the positive things in our lives. I do this sometimes in different settings. I've done this over many different years, but I put up on the uh, whiteboard or a chalkboard or a PowerPoint presentation just three simple math problems. I may have done it here. I don't know if I have or not. But I just put up three simple math problems, just really like one plus one, two plus two, you know, six plus seven, something like that. And uh, with one of those problems, one of those math problems will be wrong. And all I will say to people, I'll say, what do you notice? I don't say what's wrong with this. I'll say, what do you notice about this slide or about this, these math problems? And what do you think the first thing and the only thing that anybody ever says? You got one wrong. I have never had anybody say first, hey, you got two right, but you got one wrong. Everybody always zeroes in on what is wrong, which is not a bad thing. It's a good thing to pay attention to what's wrong, to the dangers that are out there. If you're walking through the woods and you come upon a rattlesnake, you better believe it's a good thing to notice that rattlesnake before you step on it, right? So noticing the negatives in life is not necessarily a bad thing when we get so fixated on the negatives that it blinds us to the positives in our life and in the life of those we love, then we end up with some serious problems. But when I do that simple math problem scenario, nobody ever says you got to right. And nobody ever, at any point, ever points out anything positive. They only focus on the negative, and that is all they say. I was here at the school supply giveaway yesterday and with Montana and Yvonne and Ruth and Christy and the kids, and a woman came in that uh, needed some school supplies for two of her younger children. She's got a 20-year-old daughter as well, but 
she was very thankful for what we were doing, but she also uh, asked if we could help with a flat tire that she had. Now Steve shared a little bit about the struggles that poor people in the community go through just to simply make ends meet. So Yvonne, I didn't quite catch what the, she was saying, but she was talking to Yvonne, and Yvonne uh, asked me if I could go to help change her tire. And of course, you know, absolutely would love to help, help the uh, lady with her tire. So we walk out to her car. She had just barely made it into the parking lot. She probably had to ride on a flat tire to get in. And as we were walking out, I sensed no despair in her heart. I sensed nothing but joy and thanksgiving and thankfulness. And we walked up to her car, and as we were walking, she kept mentioning this church that she goes to, and uh, a couple of things about God and the Lord, and it's like, cool, okay. And we walk up to her car, and it's an old, old Oldsmobile, maybe a 95 model Oldsmobile, uh, barely any paint left on it at all. And all four tires were in pretty bad shape. And the one that I took off that I thought I would never get off, but I finally got it off, those little plastic caps were bare to get off of those uh, lug nuts. But I finally got it off. But that tire had wires coming out of it all around. And I know it's simply as I was changing that tire, and it took me a long time. Who knows, maybe the Lord made that lug nut just stick on there so I would have more time to talk to this lady yesterday and to be ministered to by her, really. Because as we were doing all of this with this old, dilapidated car that when it finally, I finally heard her crank it up as she was leaving, I didn't know if it was going to crank, and I thought, surely as she pulled out, I don't know if she's going to make it to wherever she is going. She's going over to King's Mountain. But the whole time we talked, she never expressed any kind of negative that I sensed at all. I saw joy on her face, and I sensed and felt the presence of thanksgiving in her heart. Amazing. Even though she told me as we talked that she had gotten married, and the night that they were, uh, first night of their honeymoon, the guy that she had married told her, well, now I've got you, so you're not really a challenge anymore. And she thought he was kidding. He wasn't. So she is left with three children whom he really doesn't take much responsibility for, only when he can aggravate her. But even through all of that and all of the things she's gone through, she says she even has people that are close to her, people in her church probably, who tell her, you're cursed. Something, something's not right in your life. You're cursed. But she refused to believe that she's cursed because she knows the one from whom all blessings flow. And because of her relationship with God Almighty through Jesus Christ and because of the presence of God's Holy Spirit in her life, she is still thankful. Amazing. Humanly impossible. You think about the difficulties in your own life. Some of you may have gone through times in your life like that. Many of you may not have. But there are many people all around us who struggle day in and day out simply to make ends meet, to put, put simple food on the table. So when we come together and say, hey, let's do something for the community, when we come together and say, hey, let's just provide some notebooks and pencils and some book bags, or when we uh, do the backpack program that we do here to, to, to help the needy children in the school systems, uh, to provide food for them on the weekends, we are really helping people, in many cases, who are doing the absolute dead level best that they can and are doing it with integrity and with honesty and with decency and still with thanksgiving in their hearts. Thanksgiving, being willing to give God thanks, comes from a changed heart, a changed life, a transformed mind, a mind that's been transformed by God's Word. And God's Word enables us to look at things from a different perspective. Beth, uh, a couple weeks ago, gave me this poem. It's written in a very creative and neat way. And you can read it two different ways. 
and it makes sense both ways. One way makes more sense than the other. Listen to this. Today was the absolute worst day ever. And don't try to convince me that there's something good in every day. Because when you take a closer look, this world is a pretty evil place. Even if some goodness does shine through once in a while, satisfaction and happiness do not last. It's not true that it's all in the mind and heart, because true happiness can be obtained only if one's surroundings are good. It's not true that good exists. I'm sure you can all agree that the reality creates my attitude. It's all beyond my control. And you'll never in a million years hear me say that today was a good day. Now listen to the exact same words read from the bottom up instead of from the top down. Today was a good day. And you'll never in a million years hear me say that it's all beyond my control. My attitude creates the reality. I'm sure you can agree that it's not true that I'm sure that you can agree that it's not true that good exists only if one's surroundings are good. True happiness can be obtained because it's all in the mind and heart. And it's not true that satisfaction and happiness don't last. Some goodness does shine through once in a while, even if the world is a pretty evil place. Because when you take a closer look, there's something good in every day. And don't try to convince me that today was the absolute worst day ever. It just depends on your perspective and where you begin from your vantage point. What do we judge through what do we look at the circumstances of our life? And not only the circumstances of our life, but the people. This is the most important thing. The people in our lives, especially the people closest to us, but even strangers. Do we judge and do we measure everything and everyone by our own personal likes and dislikes? By our own whims? in our own fancies? Or do we look to discern through the lens of God's holy word? Do we look at life through the lens of God's word, which gives us God's vantage point, which gives us God's own viewpoint? That is a good question to ask yourself. How do I look at the situations and especially the people in my life. If we only judge by our own likes and dislikes, what makes us comfortable, what's convenient for us, then we are going to end up pretty much being a pretty miserable person who makes other people pretty miserable too, I think. But if we begin to try to look at other people, especially in our relationships, through the Word of God, through the lens that through which God Himself sees, then we can begin to be thankful for the people in our lives, even if you can believe this, as hard as it may be to believe, even the difficult, ornery people in our lives. We can begin to see the good. But not only that, not only that, we can begin to appreciate not only the good in the life of the person, but we can begin to see and appreciate the good in what we perceive to be the irritations in the person. Believe it or not, gratitude is vital for our relationships, for our marriages, for our friendships, for our families, and also for our church. Being thankful, not being so consumed and focused on the negative that we never even give any acknowledgement at all to the positives, to the good things in our lives. You know what I mean? There are good things, but even the difficult things, if we'll begin to see life through the 
vantage point of the Word of God, then we'll begin to appreciate the difficulties. It's not that we not only, we don't want the irritations to blind us to the blessings, of course, but we also don't want to allow the irritations to keep us from seeing the potential blessing in the irritation itself. Does anybody ever irritate you? Is there anybody that's ever irritated you? Okay, good. We're all, we're all in the same boat here, right? I'm very good at irritating people. Christy can attest. She'll testify today. Hallelujah, right, Christy? <laughs> but what if? What if, you know, you've heard, heard the old saying about someone who prays for patience and then they go to Walmart. <laughs> they stand in line waiting while there's 1,500 registers and only one cashier. And they got a long line and they got irritating people in front of them. And then they go to the post office and stand in line. And then they get home and uh, the house is a mess. And God, I was praying for patience. And God was saying to that person, yes, and I'm giving you every opportunity to learn. What if the irritations in our lives are actually opportunity, opportunities for us to grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? What if the irritations are stirring up things in us that we need not to get rid of the thing that irritates us, but get rid of the thing that causes the irritation in our own hearts? What if through the difficulties of life and through the difficulties in our relationships, and I'm talking about a lot of times we, we get uh, so uh, consumed with the negatives and the small irritations. Now, I'm not saying today that uh, you want to stay in an abusive situation or something like that, that you want to stay in a situation that's dangerous. Okay, I want to make sure I'm clear today. Because sometimes people misunderstand us preachers and what we say. But with the minor irritations, the, the things that cause us frustration, what if those things are God's way of exposing things in us that need to be changed? And change that happens for our good and for the betterment of ourselves and our relationships. If it brings tremendous blessing in the end, then we can thank God for the irritation, especially in hindsight. We need to begin to learn to appreciate the people in our lives. Have you ever thought about someone and said, and, and, and I, I've been blessed by many people over the years who have expressed their appreciation? To me, and I've tried to do the same as much as possible. But have you ever just thought, man, you know, some, somebody's really good at something, and I just need to tell them, but you don't. You just never get around to it. Now, if it's something that's irritating in someone, by golly, you know what? We'll get around to that one. We? We'll make time for that. But we need to take time to express gratitude for the blessings and the good and the lives of other people that we know. And we also need to take time to consider and to ponder those things that irritate us in other people. Whether God might not be trying to say something to us and about us through those things. And if He is, we can praise Him. And we can thank Him. I remember this when I graduated from college, uh, children, kids, listen up. I remember going through high school, and my junior high, high school, probably most of elementary school, just simply taking my mother and father for granted. Just simply, I would complain about what they didn't let me do and about how bad they were and all of this stuff, but I never got around to really thinking about how big of a blessing they were. And I remember I graduated from college and we were having this little party there in Greenville at a friend's house. And 
when I, they asked me to just say something at the beginning, and the first person I thought of was my mother. Because I knew, I realized at that point that I wouldn't be standing there celebrating college graduation if it wasn't for her. And it was really something simple. But I had, as a child, I had no ambition. I graduated from college. I only applied to one college. I applied to one college and didn't care if I got, didn't care if I got in or not. And I ended up getting in and I went. And I had no ambition. But my mother encouraged me and pushed me uh, to make more of myself and to do more with my life. And I just expressed my gratitude and thankfulness. And that was probably one of the first times, maybe the first time in a long time, that my mother received my simple, heartfelt gratitude for her life. I thought she was going to, you know, I mean, she, it just melted her heart. I thought she was going to jump on top of me and just kiss me all over, you know, just because she was so, she was so blessed that I shared that gratitude. Later, I would write my dad a note. My dad and I were often on bad terms, and I had a difficult relationship with him off and on. And, but I came to appreciate so much about him, and I wanted to thank him. I wrote him a note, just a simple note. Now, he was a gruff sort of a man. He, he wasn't a, a touchy, spilly kind of man by any stretch of the imagination, not even close. I mean, nowhere near that. Not even in the same country, much less ballpark. But he told me he got that note. And a tear streamed down his face because he was so blessed that I expressed my gratitude. Someone you know needs to know that you appreciate them, that you are thankful for them. I talked to a guy named Mitch. I forgot to mention him during a prayer request. His name's uh, Mitch Cohen. And several years ago, Mitch had a car accident that almost took his life. He was in a coma for a couple of months, but he made it. And came to find out after the fact that he, uh, before that, was diagnosed with cancer and had become comp completely depressed and totally hopeless. And then he had this car accident. And I remember visiting with him. He wasn't in my church. He'd come a couple of times, but his mother was a member of the church that I pastored. And I visited with him, and all I could do was leave him a note. I remember one time I left him a note and just a little uh, red-looking marble that kind of resembles a drop of blood. And I just wrote him a note that this is a reminder of God's love for you, that he gave his life for you. Well, Mitch eventually recovered and still had many, many different difficult problems and still the cancer was in remission and he was doing well, but he finally realized he shouldn't have lived, but he did. And he knew that it had to have been a miracle, it couldn't have been an accident that he lived. And he came to church and we began to talk and he eventually gave his life to Jesus Christ. And I baptized him. Mitch is probably in his 50s now. Well, I just, this was several years ago. I just got a call. I actually called him Friday. His mother asked me to call him because the cancer is back and the doctors say that it spread too far and wide for them to be able to do anything anymore. This time, when I talked to him, he was full of thanksgiving. He was full of hope. He was full of love. And he expressed his gratitude and thanksgiving to God for me. And he blessed me by thanking, simply thanking me for being there for him during a difficult time. That blessed me tremendously. There's someone in your life for whom you need to express your thanksgiving. And it will be a blessing to them. God can put thanksgiving in our hearts by His grace and by His love because of all that He has done for us in Jesus Christ. And we owe Him all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I just thank you today for your goodness. I 
thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the good times, and I thank you, Lord, for the bad times. I thank you for the, the blessings and the irritations, those things that you have used to draw me and all of us today ever closer to you. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have given each and every one of us. And I pray, Lord, that you pour your love and thanksgiving into each and every heart here today and enable us to express that thanksgiving for others and not to be so fixated and focused on the negative that we're blinded to the positives and even the positives of the negatives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. I am thine, O oh Lord. Number 419 in your red.